Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, that address doesn't even reckon with uh, answering to, quite frankly, because it bordered so on the ridiculous. So I instead, Mr Speaker, should talk about uh, the earthquake in, um, in the Canterbury region, the effects that is having on the people and the response of this government from a welfare perspective to date. Uh, can I please just add my acknowledgements from other members of Parliament to those people who are affected and those people who are in distress and trying to live their lives as best they can when, quite frankly, the youth is still moving and they are still frightened and they are still very much in a place of unknown, which I think is one of the worst places you can be, quite frankly, of not knowing what is coming next. I've just spent uh, the last 24 hours there and have seen people, uh, myself, who are really living the effects of that. Can I just start by just saying I am so um, incredibly proud of the workers within work and income and the response that they have given. Saturday afternoon they were there at the welfare centres, they were working, they were ready to step up and give that level of support to people. For some of them whom I met today, they left their own children behind at home who were distressed and upset but recognised that they wanted to go in there and help other people and that's a true measure of the job they do. They have been working and shift work at some cases from 6 in the morning until 11 o'clock at night within welfare centres. They've extended their hours. We've seen our own work and income offices close in some cases, so other workers have gone into other offices to try and meet those most urgent needs of people whom are dealing with this. So yesterday, Mr Speaker, as the House has already identified at question time, we actually announced the earthquake support subsidy. As of 11 o'clock this morning, we'd already had 65 employers step up and say they wanted to take advantage of a payment to their employees of $350 per week for businesses with 20 staff or less. That money, Mr Speaker, goes into the employer's bank account. They can then can pay their employees. They can top that up if they, if they can, and we certainly hope they can uh, to make that a living wage for them while they are having to close their businesses. We've also given some flexibility around that payment, recognising that some are part-time, recognising that in some cases businesses, perhaps a business with 10 employees, have got two still working on the phones, but effectively the other eight are out of a job in the short term while they close the business uh, and only have that sort of administration or that phoning, so those eight employees can get this assistance as well. To Today we've just announced a 2.5 million appropriation for counselling. We've been working closely with Victim Support, the Salvation Army, Relationship Services to get actually trained and qualified staff from other areas to go in and supplement the people that are already there and working and doing such a fine job. Some of them will be within the welfare centres, others will be actually home visiting and going in there. Those workers income staff from day one on or day two actually recognised that there were many elderly at home alone and actually we didn't know how they were and what they were doing and if they were doing okay. We know via super payments who was actually living alone in Canterbury. They have made to date, Mr Speaker, over 20,000 outbound phone calls. They have now made contact with 12,000 people. We still have around 6,000 that we're not quite sure where they are and how they are. So they've actually been going out and home visiting and are now working in conjunction with Salvation Army to check that those people are OK. Mr Speaker, I've heard stories of elderly people that won't get out of bed and haven't for the last three or four days because they're frightened, they're not sure of their actual agility to move quickly if they need to when those aftershocks happen because they're so frightened. So reaching out to a neighbour right now is vitally important, but equally that we put that sort of support in around them. The 0800 77 hotline has had well over 6,000 phone calls coming into it. They range from everything from is the street closed? Do you know when the schools might open? How can I get financial help? To a record amount of people that are also ringing, out and, ringing up and saying, how can we help? What can we do to actually make a difference and to support our community and get in there and make a difference? Uh, we've had uh, offers of payments to people, referrals to other agencies. Uh, it's been quite outstanding. Builders sort of ringing in and saying, how do we get in touch with someone so that we can go in and help? Mr Speaker, I today went and visited the student work gangs and I suppose you just see a little bit of a smile on my face because it was one of those lighter moments where um, the fire truck from the engineering students turned up with 80 pizzas in it uh, and they started handing oh, them out. 
uh, they started handing out those pizzas to them, but uh, very, very commendable and something to look at. Dr. Russell.